Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Ghetto. My name is Hans. I'm Edward. And we're your hosts for now and forevermore. But until you start contorting to death. Yes, Jeez. yes. So uh, about that, our wonderful listeners, Edward is currently suffering from a bit of an unexplained jaw spasm, which seems to come around every couple of minutes. As a result, if you are watching the stream, you might see him just go out of view and back in again. And that's essentially happening because of the pain that he's experiencing. So, you know, between the two of us, we're falling apart. If it wasn't me not being able to do anything because of my back a while ago, now Edward can barely speak because of his jaw. So, welcome to Gettle. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, if you're new to our podcast, uh, welcome to one of the internet's very best variety podcasts dealing with everything to do with gaming, entertainment, technology, and lifestyle, all wrapped up in a wonderful... Geeky showcase again. Okay, cool. No worries. Yeah, because Edward keeps, yeah, you're using the same thing. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, we know that for most of you who have been following us on social media, we did mention that we were actually going to do questions this episode. We are changing gears. And what we're rather going to do is we're going to save that for our uh, final episode for 2020 which we have decided is going to be episode 42 because life, the universe, and everything in between. You know that reference? High five to you. Yeah. Um, so by all means, if you have anything else you'd still like to ask us, or, you know, now the good news is that it gives you extra time. It's not like we just threw this on you within two days to us recording a, a podcast. You now have a good two odd weeks to really think of some very, very poignant questions and things that you might want to ask us over the last you know 40 episodes that we've all been together yeah um so yeah now with that in mind uh because we originally wanted to do the questions for this episode and now we've changed gears at the very last minute we i would actually I, I, weird enough we're not short in content uh but <laughs> so so no, as me. <laughs> so as per usual we're going to go into a few news reviews and previews and then get into meat of the the episode as per usual and then of course some nsfw <laughs> it's actually the content we cut from episode uh, 39 so as we, always we look forward to that <laughs> now with that said we actually have two other like super cool announcements one of which is a personal one but i do feel you know edward is always around and involved so he should share in this I've reached a thousand subscribers on YouTube. So thank you to everyone who continues to watch and um, subscribe. And yeah. and more importantly, from a Gettle perspective, over a thousand downloads. Do -do -do -do. So thank yeah. you yeah. everyone for, for your, your constant <laughs> listening. It's, it's actually really awesome. We've just been seeing the stats mm. increase and increase. And I know like we... We don't often talk about it, or, or, or uh, we always allude to it, but it's this is a huge milestone for us. Episode it's 40 nice. reached over a thousand downloads. I mean, thank you. Just thank you to those of you who continue to listen to us. We really, really appreciate it. And, you know, onwards and upwards. Yeah. Cool. All right. So with that in mind, uh, we're going to go straight into some TV. I have been watching Alex Ryder this, uh, the, for the last couple of weeks. It is a new TV series on Amazon Prime, and it's actually based on a series of young adult novels, which I didn't really realize at the time, and I did some research into it, and it's very, not necessarily Hunger Games-like, because it's, it doesn't have to do with the post-apocalypse, but what I'm getting at is it's that sort of genre of, um, you know, that's the readership that they're going for. Mm -hmm. And when I first heard of it, I was like, oh, you know, it's not going to be great, because when is anything... That is made for tweens good, especially when yeah. it's on TV, you know? Especially nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> especially nowadays. I mean, I mean, we've spoken at length on Gittle about CW shows and how you know disappointing they almost always are. Yeah. So, you know, when I when I saw it and I read a bit about it, I didn't expect much, but I thought, you know what, let's let's give it a shot. You know, let's let's see. And I have been pleasantly surprised. So, not to give away any. Uh, spoilers or anything like that but the gist of it is is that Alex Ryder is essentially like a young 007 um, it also takes place in the UK 
But what essentially happens is that he gets embroiled into this um, conspiracy theory to, you know, for not necessarily the end of the world, but to bring in a new dawn of humanity. And it just so happens that um, he was actually trained unknowingly in the arts of being a spy. Okay. It's very, it's very, very interesting that there's still a lot of unanswered questions. And of course, you know, his primary motivation is because somebody close to him died. So he wants revenge, you know, so, I mean, it's not entirely uh, free of cliches, but overall mm. though, from a, pro from a production perspective, especially the acting is very good for the most part. There are a few duds along the way, um, but Alex Ryder himself, the actor who plays him is very, very, very good as well as a lot of the villains and the, you know, the agency people that he works for. Um, and it's just. It's a good show. Like the cinematography mm. as well. It's shot very well. You know, it's good high grade special effects. Not that they really need very many, but it's 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 good. And and the the narrative is intriguing. You know, it pull it pulls you in. You just want to keep wondering, like, what's happening? Who are these people? What is Alex Ryder getting into cool. today? And what's nice about it as well is it's not procedural. So it's not like every episode is like an episode of CSI where it's self-contained. So you mm. do need to watch them all in succession to really know what's going on. But yeah, it's 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 genuinely good. I mean, I'd give it a good like seven and a half, you know, so, out of a, so out of ten. This is an Amazon show. Amazon Prime, yes. As far as See, I as far as I understand, lately Amazon has been hitting it out of the ballpark. Um, like with the boys. And even the tech was amazing. Okay, I didn't get into the tech. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. Um, but you, you're, you're right. They are investing heavily. I mean, goodness knows we all are looking forward to the Lord of the Rings show, which mm. is going to be incredible in the very near future. Yeah. You know, which yeah. is also an Amazon exclusive, you know. Now, other than that, um, I've, we also recently completely finished The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. I heard it's good. And let me tell you, it is the best drama. Let me just really think about that for a second. Yes. <laughs> the best <laughs> drama TV series I have watched in 2020 thus far. 2020 okay. is almost over. Yeah. Now, of course, when I say best TV series, I mean best new TV series. Because, you know, the likes of The Crown are consistently excellent. You know, I mean, the, the 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 fourth season has just dropped, and I'm very very keen to see where they're going with that because Princess Diana gets introduced. But now I'm moving away from the Queen's Gambit. You know, the Queen. Anyway, um, so Queen's Gambit, also a Netflix show. It is absolutely absolutely incredible. It's all about a young chess prodigy who no one realizes is a prodigy because um, she becomes an orphan at a very young age, and so she's raised by an orphanage before eventually being adopted by um, a couple. And it's just, a, it's just such a interesting look at how someone who is completely down on their luck in many, many respects can, through a good support system and, th and through having some form of conviction and purpose in their life, overcome issues like drug addiction and pain and loss and uh, and so on and so forth and it's That's really cool. just it's incredible but but do you want to know what the most most fascinating part about it is what it's entirely based on the game of chess oh I, <laughs> oh that was the trailer then i saw the trailer and i thought what what even yes. is this so oh. so you know i've always enjoyed chess all right but i would never consider chess to be riveting by any stretch of the imagination and so in terms of the Queen's Gambit, it's just done in such a wonderful and beautiful way that, you know, you can't help but be on the edge of your seat during the games she plays or when things are happening in her life. Like, like uh, it's, it's weird to say that because I'm not really into sports, you're right. So I don't get, you know, I don't, I don't get my knickers in a twist for soccer or rugby or anything like that. But I was genuinely on my seat for her playing these chess games and I was rooting for her, um, cool. you know, and it's it's in addition to that, it's just it's such a beautifully shot series. The cinematography is is next level as well as the audio design and the outfits. I mean, look, I can continue raving about the show because even the acting is super, super, super top notch. 
Um, I'm hoping that the the main actress, which I think is is Jessica Joy, and I've forgotten her last name, something like that. Um, she deserves an award of some kind for for this role. She really is superb in it, and just the nuance in her face while she's playing games of chess. You know, it's just it's incredible. It's honestly, an incredible show. If you like dramas and you and especially dramas that are entertaining, mm. Queen's Gambit, I highly, highly, highly recommend. Honestly speaking. One of the best dramas of 2020. That's cool. <laughs> now, Edward, um, slightly moving on to some video games. Uh, you played, or oh, well, you you alluded to Assassin's Creed Valhalla last week. Yes. But uh, if you want to just give us a cool two minutes of why it's worth our time this week. Oh, because it's amazing. Uh, that's the <laughs> short of it. Um, so in Valhalla, you play a Viking called Evior. Um, actually, by the time, just a quick um insert by the time this episode goes live something special would be live as well on vamers.com um the return of a beloved feature we used to do um so <laughs> just look out for that one um, it's hashtag vamers playlist honestly it's one of some of the best features we have on the site yes um and it's some of our favorites now valhalla is quite outstanding honestly um, I did love Odyssey. It was the best game of the bunch. It still is. Um, Valhalla is not better than Odyssey. But it's pretty much up there because it... it Valhalla is a, a conglomeration, I want to say, of all the good things from all the previous Assassin's Creeds. Now, this one is an open world as well. Um, but it feels tighter. It feels like Syndicate, almost. Oh, not Syndicate, yes. like Unity almost. Unity, yeah. Um, and it has ideas from Assassin's Creed 2. And it you have the settlement bit from Assassin's Creed 3. And it it's all of this. Uh, and it has the type of protagonist from Assassin's Creed 4. And all of this just <laughs> comes together in a beautiful package that I really, really, really like. Um and also the lore and the the story is fascinating. Uh, so it's super you good. See, I did like it a that's, lot. That's something that I've always loved about the Assassin's Creed series and mm. how um, I touched upon it in my original review for Origins, how I, did, I felt they didn't do enough from a mythos perspective, especially from because it was based in Egypt. I mean, that was so easy to relate to aliens or gods or whatever the case yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, easy. But yeah. but thankfully, Odyssey rectified that. And my understanding is that um, Valhalla just takes it to the next step, the yes. next level in terms of the narrative from that perspective. Now, um, I have been streaming it um, and I've been thoroughly enjoying it. I My workload is a bit too heavy right now to continue it, but I will most <laughs> likely get into it in the next... Um, couple of weeks once you know we all be wind down for the the holiday season yeah that's awesome thank you edward so yeah assassin's yeah. creed valhalla the little bit that i've played i'm thoroughly enjoying already um and i'm so glad that you know edward's review is excellent as always we will link below to both the playlist and um his review on the game um if you are interested in it by all means please do go and read it it is uh, it's a good read it tells you exactly what you need to know about the game and well basically that you should buy it <laughs> yeah, essentially just that, buy it. That's really it. the end of the the, the, the gist <laughs> of it. You know, if, you, if you've enjoyed any of the previous Assassin's Creed, you're going to love this one, basically. Yes, for uh, sure. Now, with some previews in mind, um, I actually do have some other hardware, again, that I'm testing. And I, 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 I mean that in a good way. Um, I've received something from Nintendo. It's basically the new um, AI augmented reality uh, racing game. Um, I don't have it with me because I forgot to put it behind me. Uh, but I will be testing that and hopefully reviewing that in about a week or two. Um, now, for those of you who are watching and for those of you who have been listening, you'll know that we did allude to the possibility of us getting the other next generation console. And if you're watching the video, you'll see it behind me. Uh, for those of you who are listening, it is the PlayStation 5. I can confirm we do have it in our possession. Yep. And... It is huge. <laughs> it's massive. It's the size of your head, Hans. <laughs> it's, well, I mean, well, right now, if you're watching the video, it does seem that way. But no, it is genuinely big. Um, I did shoot and produce a full-on unboxing. I was in two minds about doing it, uh, purely because, you know, in comparison to how Microsoft treated South African media, you know, we actually received the consoles well before the global release, which was really just fantastic because it meant that 
you know, when you, when you work really hard on content and you produce something and it happens before even the biggest YouTubers get it, you know, that's just a wonderful feeling. It's very difficult to replicate that. Now we often yeah. have that for game reviews, but we seldom, if ever have it for hardware. So the fact that we could have that for the Series X and the S was just phenomenal. Mm. Um, well, speaking of that, uh, I actually did buy, or we, I, I originally bought the X and the S for, for Vamers. I was going to have the X, uh, it was, it was going to have the S, um, because Microsoft gave us the Series X that we were reviewing. Edward now has a Series X of his own and I gifted my dad the Series S and he absolutely loves it. Um, yeah. He's always been a gamer, and since we've moved to Mac, and you know, after we we lost the house in 2018, and you know, when we had the the burglary earlier this year, um, you know, he hasn't really gotten back into it because you know, gaming on a Mac is not the same as gaming on a console or a gaming PC. Yeah. Um, I, I did try to get him to game on an iPad, but he's very old school. I mean, he is in his 70s, so uh, it's, it's it's to be expected. But yeah, he's loving it. He's uh, really taken to it, and. He's so impressed by things like quick resume, which which I didn't even really explain. He was just telling me how, how fast the machine is. And mm. I was like, yeah, you know, that's the new tech. And, you know, the more I think about it, the S is just such a wonderful value proposition. It really is good for people who either, um, you know, can't afford the main one or who simply um, want a starting point, you know, and can't yeah. afford a, a PC. It's really just very good value for money from that perspective. Yeah. Okay, now I've I've gone I've gone over what I actually was meant to be speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As always. Uh, yeah, uh, PlayStation Five. I've unboxed it. There's a full video on the channel. By all means, please feel free to go and check it out. Um, so it's it's big, a lot bigger than than anyone can really imagine until you see it in person. The design is divisive. Um, I my initial reactions were eh. But now that I've had it for a while, I'm, it's, it's really growing on me. It's this, you know, every time I look over, it's, um, it's a nice, it's like, it's like a piece of art, you know, it's, mm. it's, 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 it's nice looking. I, I can't say any, anything else other than that. I prefer the Series X though, because it does fit nicely into, no matter where you put it, it's very unobtrusive. So it doesn't, mm. A, take up a lot of space. B, it's not like in your face, you know, like you have to see it all the time. Whereas the PlayStation 5 is a little bit like, it's there. Yeah, you, it's, you see it. You 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 can't not see it. You know, it, it's there. It's in your face. It's you have a PlayStation Five. Yeah, it's noticeable. <laughs> um, <clears throat> other than that, I've had a um, some well a fair amount of hands-on time with it, and it's a good system. I think if you are somebody who enjoys PlayStation, if you've always been in the PlayStation family and you're looking towards getting a PlayStation Five, it's a wonderful upgrade. Do I think it is absolutely necessary? Um, no, and I, I feel this is the same for both consoles, whether you're Series X or PlayStation 5. Both consoles right at this point in time are not necessarily must-have items. They're nice to have right now, but they're not must-have. Yeah. Um, you know, I say that with reservation, of course, uh, because, you know, if you are an early adopter like we are, you know, you like to have the best, then sure, by all means, go off and get it. But if, you, if you're not, you could easily wait up to a year. Fact is, both machines are lacking in exclusives. Uh, you know, people will argue and say that PS5 has a better launch lineup. With all due respect, those are remasters. There is actually not a single game on the system that is launching towards the end of the year that I'm currently aware of, which is a total exclusive. I mean, even Godfall is currently on PC. So yeah. really, at the end of the day, and we've mentioned this before, PC gamers are the best and they win. They're the yeah. biggest winners. <laughs> you get it all, <laughs> including bag snacks. So, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, yeah, it, it, it was a, a decent unboxing. It was an average unboxing. There was nothing special about it, really, to be honest. Um, I feel Sony actually cheapened out a bit on it, uh, you know, especially now that I've seen what, what Microsoft is doing, even with the Series X. Uh, I mean, the Series S and the X. Um, you know, the S is the, the, the cheaper variant, but it still has a phenomenal experience. It still opens the same way. It's still front and center. You know, yeah. maybe they use cardboard instead of foam, but it's, it's nice. You know, the PlayStation was just, I don't want to say cheap, <laughs> but like, <laughs> you know, I accidentally tore the cardboard already. Um, you know, you, you take it out. The machine is, is rolled in paper. It's not even wrapped. <laughs> so, you know, these are little things, I suppose. Um, but you know, they all count towards the overall experience, you know, like it was yeah. clear that the, the Sony unboxing experience didn't put you front and center. 
it puts the machine front and center, you know, so it's a very different uh, means of, 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 of looking at things. Mm-hmm. Um, something else, the PlayStation 5 scratches really badly. Um, you, I obviously ha- have had to touch it, you know, to move it for the video. And I needed to remove some fingerprints. So I literally used this, which is a soft microfiber cloth, all right? And I didn't even rub hard. And yeah, PS5 is scratched. So uh, <laughs> anybody who wow. gets one... Um, do your best not to touch that super shiny black piece of the system because it's going to scratch. It's really like, like genuinely like, like I know I mentioned how the series X, I didn't like the fact that it was a fingerprint magnet, but let me tell you, I'd rather take fingerprints over scratches because fingerprints can be wiped away. Exactly. Uh, scratches can't. Once, once it's scratched, clean, it's scratched. Then? With air well, or something. Well, you, how do you remove a fingerprint with air? You can't. That's so... True. Look, look, bear in mind, I, I'm not gonna, I don't want to over exaggerate it. It's not that the scratches are awful. You know, it's not like they're deep or they're gashes or anything like that. It's just they're, they're very fine and they're there specifically when the light hits them at a certain angle or direction. So, I mean, they're not directly in your face, but you know, it is just something that you have to be aware of, especially if you're going to get the system. Now, with that said, the white panels are 100%. They're super premium. And they actually feature a really, really nice design on the inside, which is the sigils, the the, the square, triangle, circle, and X that the PlayStation brand is really well known for. And um, that design is on the inside of the panels as well as on the DualSense controller, which, speaking of, DualSense is a huge improvement over DualShock. Um, it's much, much bigger. So that's going to be a shock to PlayStation gamers out there. A shock. It, but, but, but no, but, but it works though. Like the size is, I mean, dare I say more comfortable than the Xbox controller now. Um, it really feels lovely in, in, in your hands. Um, I, I do like the, the new haptic feedback. Um, it does, it is very, very cool. You know, for little things like when Astro Bot is running around, you can actually feel the, the, the different kinds of taps, whether he's walking on ground or versus working on metal, it's legit. You know, it actually does make a difference. But I wouldn't say it's that revolutionary. Like, it's it's cool and it's nice, but if you didn't have it, it doesn't fundamentally change the way you play the game. Actually, um, I, I had a question yeah? about that, by the way. Um, okay, yeah. As you know, the DualSense has the speaker and all, and the haptics also feed into the sound, which hmm. gives you that sense, I yes. guess. Yes, yes. Um, how does it affect your experience if you only play with, let's say, a sound isolating headset? Um, it's the same. So, so, it so if, take if away you ha- from it, us. no, okay. um, I would I would say that the the controller audio only, as you've mentioned now, only really complements it if you're using a speaker system for audio. You know, like okay. if it's coming out of your TV, then you have like that extra, you know, surround sound from the controller that mm-hmm. comes up to your ears. Um, it's a valid point. It's a valid point. Without being able to hear the controller, you aren't necessarily sure where the taps are coming from. So you absolutely can make out the differences and you can feel it. So like when you hear the tippy taps, you can feel it in the controller. Um, and, and, and I, I do like it. Now, obviously if you don't have a headset on and you're only using the controller, it does enhance that feedback. You know, being able to hear it in the controller and it coincides with the the like the rumble feedback. Look, yeah. it's it's a huge, huge, huge improvement. And I think maybe in addition to the haptic feedback, the triggers are probably one of my favorite parts about it because they genuinely do feel different. And it was the weirdest thing when I had to actually click them in for Astrobot to fly around as a robot, uh, as a like a rocket, um, because it, they actually genuinely lock. And then when you push, they 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 like it feels like a clip. Oh. And it's a it's a very unusual That's thing cool. to to um, explain. You've got to feel it. So so yeah. yes, dual sense is probably my the, the best thing about the PlayStation Five. To mm. be perfectly honest with you, um, but yeah, I will obviously speak more about it next week when cool. I've actually like actually really reviewed. had some proper good yeah yeah like and then I'll have like a video review hopefully. <laughs> now um, with games in the mind because hey, what is what is Gettle without gaming? It is the first you know, letter in our name. <laughs> in the name, yeah. Um, there was something super cool that I, I came across. So I'm hoping that many of you who listen have played uh, Grand Theft Auto V in some form or another, right? And it, I mean, sorry, Grand Theft Auto Four now, because five is still coming. 
Well, no, no, five no. is out. We've had I'm an entire caught... generation of five. Okay, yes, sorry, so. sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Either okay. way, either way. Um, GTA has always featured really incredible radio stations. Yes. And um, I recently learned that there is a particular radio station called We Know the Truth Talk Radio, so WKTT, which is a very political radio station, um, and it's featured specifically in um, GTA 4. And what I learned is that the people who call in on the radio station are real. They're not paid actors. <laughs> oh. Right? Right? So apparently what happened is, is during the, the, the lead up to uh, GTA 4, like many, we're talking about many, many years ago now. It's been more than a decade, I think. Um, Rockstar actually asked their communities or their fans for feedback by posting a link um, where people could call in and anonymously leave back, leave feedback about what they thought of America at that particular point in time. Oh, that's cool. And so, yeah, and so people called and they left messages and stuff. And, well, lo and behold, most of the voices that called in actually made it into the radio station for the game. <laughs> that explains a lot. Yes, and, and what's really cool about it as well is that it was not just um, the average Joe. So a lot of celebrities got involved as well. And, you know, it's people like J Jason Sudeikis, uh, Ricky Gervais, Jim Norton, and even Chelsea Peretti. You know, they actually, their voices also totally made it into, what is it, WTKK? WKTT? WKTT, yeah. And I just, I think that's just incredible that, that that's super you know, cool. Rockstar had that element of bringing the real world and merging it with the video game. You know, I absolutely, I, I love that. Um, you know, especially, I mean, look, I actually wonder if many of them knew. <laughs> I, That's I have what to I'm assume, wondering as well. I, I have to assume that when you called in, it probably told you that yeah. you, whatever you comment here can be used in, you know, in the future, whatever the case yeah. is. Because like the, the slogan for the radio station is, because democracy is worth surpassing rights for. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, obviously it's a little a little um, contentious, you know. Especially <laughs> you, now. You'd have, to be, you'd have to be, yeah, especially now, you know, <laughs> that um, Orange is sus and has been, has been evicted. Ejected. <laughs> Ejected. <laughs> uh, okay, so with, with um, GTA on the mind and, you know, speaking about how cool that is with where real world meets something fictional... Um, Apple had their event this week, and um, yeah. if you want to know where the real world meets the fictional, it's because they managed to get a heck of a lot of celebrities um, involved in the the Apple event that revealed the Apple M for Mom One chip, which mm -hmm. is based on Apple Silicon, and it's going to be the first new chips to be in their MacBook Air and MacBook Pros, which is absolutely incredible. Yeah, and um, as I mentioned, a lot of celebrities got involved to be a part of the event. One of which was Billie Eilish. Hey, Edward. Yeah. Um, the, sh she featured in that intro video you see in the event. But also, did you know that her new song was filmed exclusively on an iPhone? It was actually quite see, good. Now, that is incredible. Now, I am aware of movies having been produced and being just shot on iPhone. Actually, as a matter of fact, a lot of my secondary video is taken on iPhone for my channel. Actually, sometimes even the really, really super close-ups that my wonderful lens can't do from like a macro perspective are sometimes shot on iPhone. And you wouldn't tell. And you can't tell. Yeah, yeah. that's literally it. <laughs> yeah, so basically Billie Eilish, she said because of the quarantine, um, the mall was empty. So she shot this entire music video, just her having fun in a mall, being chaotic in a mall is what she said. And also, because it's so of the, cool. <laughs> yeah, and also that this entire new album that she released actually was inspired by the quarantine, mainly because she she explains it as she would have been in a different headspace had the quarantine never happened, had COVID never come, and while all the songs on this album isn't related to COVID, um. It's still a different kind of headspace she was in when she made it. And sorry, I just noticed my watch isn't on silent. Um, and yeah, 
she just said that thanks to the quarantine, she now has this amazing new album, which is a, a, which, which means a lot more than she originally thought it would, which is quite cool. Look, that makes a lot of sense to me because quarantine has affected us all in yeah. in many different ways. Um, I've actually, I mean, I don't want to say I've been able to focus on YouTube because I actually haven't. Like, like to me, it was like the opposite effect. You know, I couldn't work because nobody could send anything. Mm. Um, so, you know, I like the fact that she's writing from her experience because it's been detrimental to a lot of us. Like, I mean, we're still technically quarantining because I have somebody who's immunocompromised and somebody over the age of 70 in my home. So I have to still be very careful, you know? Yeah. Um, and it has fundamentally changed life. Like if I think about people who I still keep in touch with, um, you know, people who still keep in touch with me, you know, you can count those people on two hands if you're lucky, it's probably one or less, you know, for the most part. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So actually with this in mind, I'm going to listen to her album. I am yeah. <laughs> quite interested to to see what else, um, you know, if it's any good, you know, that this is quarantine album of hers. See, I like Billie Eilish a lot. I like her music a lot, but the, her last album was... It wasn't her best, in my opinion. And it yeah, kind it of put average. me off. And I haven't listened <laughs> to her stuff in a long while. Now, I actually watched this music video and it's... It's good. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, I watched it before I even knew it was shot on iPhone. Um, this, I found out this morning, which is amazing. So That yeah. is amazing. That yeah. is really amazing. Now, speaking of Apple and the new M1 chip that we mentioned before, <laughs> I am looking at it with lustful eyes, the new MacBook Pro that they've announced. <laughs> Of because, course. So I've had I do a lot of video editing, obviously. And I wanted a MacBook for a variety of other personal reasons, which I'm not going to discuss yet in the podcast, but perhaps in the future we will. Um, but basically I like the mobility, you know, mm. being able to take my laptop anyway with my computer anyway with me, and I have all the power, I have everything. It's not like I have a Mac and then I have a MacBook, you know? Mm. And so um what is really remarkable about this M1 chip, and bear in mind, this is Apple's first entry point into the Apple Silicon for, for computers or for Macs. It can edit 8K video. Y'all, I was struggling to edit a 5, five 4K stream video. Okay, you know, because obviously I'm overkill as well. <laughs> Who needs five, <laughs> yeah. five video streams? OTT. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, you know, th they've putting this chip into a MacBook Air, which is what it, it's a quarter the weight of my current laptop it's and a fanless it laptop edit, and it's fanless and it's fanless because like this thing right now is causing such a huge noise it, every week without fail i have to post process our audio for our videos so sometimes it sounds worse than it normally does and that's purely because i'm trying to a help edward with his audio and b also whatever noise is in my background now with that said with that said and i know we haven't mentioned yet because we meant to mention at the beginning of the episode Edward and I have new microphones. Yes. You be welcome, bitch. You be welcome, Edward. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, now your life will be easier. <laughs> I'm genuinely, genuinely, genuinely hoping that it will be a lot better quality wise from an audio perspective going forward. But of Actu course, <laughs> you know. Actually, <laughs> last week there was this niggle in the audio that made it sound like I was exorcising a demon or something. Oh. My gosh, it was it was it was so bad. Now I I did my best to to take so it would post process his audio that I further post process his audio, which is why it sounded like he was speaking out of a tin can. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it bad. was because it was that or it sounded like demons are coming out of his microphone. <laughs> I mean, there was no other no other explanation. <laughs> well, if that happens again, we know I need to move. Yes, now, so yes. But no, yeah. no, look, you, you should be fine now. So um, Edward now has my uh, my former Blue Yeti microphone, which I've been using for the last year. And I've upgraded to the Yeti X, um, which is absolutely incredible. I'll speak about it a bit more in maybe a future episode because obviously it's still brand new. I've only been using it for a couple of days. But really incredible, incredible microphone and well, well, at least right now anyway, and from a first impressions perspective, well worth the cost. Anyway, back to Apple M1. Uh, yes. <laughs> what I was saying is, it's this 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 fanless machine that can render and edit 8K audio in a laptop that is a quarter of the weight of my machine. Like, yeah. like sign me up, y'all. Sign me up. You know? 
The, and the best part of it is this is just the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the 15 inch MacBook Air. I guarantee that an M1X or something will be in the bigger MacBook Pro. Oh, just see, so so that's what I'm waiting for. Now, yeah. little little uh, industry advice to those of you who do listen. Never buy Apple's first gen products. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me not say never. Um, with the exception of the AirPods Pro that I'm using right now, because these are phenomenal. I mean, these were... Okay, but but then again, they were based off the original AirPods. So, you know, you, you could argue that the AirPod was the original one and the AirPod Pro is like the, the newer version. The second one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, because So with that in mind, I'm most likely going to upgrade to Apple Silicon next year, despite the fact that I just got a brand new MacBook Pro now. But of course, my situation is a bit different. I got it only because all my stuff was stolen. So if I didn't get it, I wouldn't have had anything. <laughs> a little, yeah. little bit of a different situation, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> but next year, yes, I, I plan on getting an Apple Silicon MacBook Pro, especially if they manage one that is super powerful. And, and I don't mind if it's small um, because this thing is connected to a screen in any case. So, you know, what difference does it make? Um, in terms of spec wise, I, I don't actually have it listed in front of me, but all you really need to know is that it's super powerful. I think it's an eight core, uh, CPU and an eight core yes. GPU. Is that correct? Yes, that and is. neither are customizable. In other words, you know, in the past when Apple created, uh, or had computers for you to order, you could customize the Ram, the, which CPU, which GPU. Now they're basically, um, unifying that and all you really can change, I think, but I stand to be corrected is the RAM, the SSD storage. And I think on one of the MacBooks, I think it's the MacBook Air, you can choose between four or eight core GPU. So oh, um, that's cool. it, 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 is, it is strange that there, there is like one portion of it that they, they have a bit of a, a change in. I don't know why, um, but I think it's just because it's MacBook Air and people don't really need it for what, I mean, these things are so bloody powerful. I mean, um, TLD today, Jonathan Morrison actually posted on Twitter how um, he has a fully specced out, I think it's an iMac, and he rendered a video on the iMac versus rendering on his iPhone 12 mini. And the mini completed it in like 10 seconds and the Mac was still yeah. going like 10 minutes later. So, yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> he actually posted a full video about that. Um, oh, really? Literally, while the, the MacBook, uh, the Mac had a head start, and he st and he started with a mini at about fifty percent. The yes. mini was done by the time the MacBook still got to ninety percent. It's amazing. <laughs> so, so okay, well, if there is a video, I will link below. Otherwise, I'll just link to his tweet about it. Um, but yeah, either way, Apple M1, it's here. It's Apple Silicon. It looks incredible. Um, Edward and I are both genuinely, genuinely, genuinely excited for it. Now, with that in mind, we do know that Apple sometimes is quite um, stringent when it comes to copywriting their material. You know, they don't like mm -hmm. it if you, if you steal the things. They're, they're not as bad as um, the Sonys of the world, which I just want to quickly mention about how Sony often will will pick on websites and, tell, and send them DMCA notices to take down content. Actually happened recently to um, an acquaintance of ours in the gaming industry, whereby he posted on a, it's a very popular South African website about the Miles Morales uh, boot screen. Um, obviously before the PlayStation's international, uh, well, select country launch, which was on the 12th of November. And they issued him a takedown notice that he's not allowed to do it. And I just find that so weird given how that those videos are everywhere. I mean, people are, are literally like huge media outlets like Eurogamer have posted about it. Like why can't yeah. he do it? And, and it's not even his content. He's just posting what somebody else has posted. Exactly. It's crazy and, and to me. And not, not only that, Sony is also known to issue DMCA takedowns for literal share, for literally sharing their marketing material. Um, like um, Nobelian, you know? a <laughs> prominent journalist on, on Twitter, he tends to share all of these video game stuff and tech stuff. And he gets countless DMCA takedowns from Sony just for sharing... The let's uh, the the most recent one was the Miles Morales t uh, trailer, the actual trailer. Like, you know, you know. So. I want to say I'm surprised. I'm just not. No. So look, I haven't tested it yet on PlayStation Five, but but I'm so going to do it because I need to have this in my review. Yeah. On PlayStation Four, you cannot copy content. 
you can no. only move. So a little more insight into, again, with Vamers and how Edward and I do things. So um, when we're allowed to, we will often share content because, um, you know, it does allow us to, to, to do that. Whereby, you know, um, when we get review code, we only get, we'll get one single code. And then obviously it's only attached to one account. Yeah. Okay. I just realized something, Hans. Yes. <laughs> so literally what you're leading into is every time you give me the game to on my external drive yes. to, to go review, you have to re-download yours. Okay. Correct. Fine. We won't be able to do that on PS5 anymore. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Be because PS5... Oh, my gosh. Oh, I... Oh, oh my gosh. What I just the had a mind. Hell. Break. Okay. No, <laughs> now, now we are launching into a tirade. Okay. So <laughs> I've had the system for a while now. And I, although I haven't tested copy and moving it just because there was no need to, we have seen it being reported online that PlayStation 5 games cannot be copied or moved right now. Yeah. Which totally takes away from the convenience of having the system for review purposes. Yep. What a mess. <laughs> yep. You know what? No, you know what? There's other things that I want, that you know what? Since we're on this now, there's a few other mm. things that I want to mention now about PlayStation 5, which I'm going to, which I was going to save for my review, but like <laughs> it doesn't have 1440p support. It doesn't have options to change the refresh rate within settings. So whatever your TV, your TV supports, that's what it maxes out to. So if I connect it to my Sony C9, I mean, my, LG OLED C9, which supports 120 hertz, the PlayStation 5 automatically switches to 120 hertz, and then I have no, no option to change it, which means games that support 120 hertz automatically run in their 1080p resolution on my 4K screen at 120. Thank that you, Sony, sucks. for that. Wow. Then you can't move or copy anything to external, as Edward was saying, if it's a PlayStation 5 title. Sony have not put the option into the software. It's just not there. So you can't yeah. do anything. Then there's no NVMe authorized storage. So of the 605 gigabytes that the system ships with, because bear in mind, it's only an 825 gig um, SSD of which, what, almost 200 gigs of that is taken up by the system, which doesn't even support quick resume. Can you, I'm just, I don't want to be overly negative about this thing, but I, and you know what, you know what, I'm going to be very honest here for a second. People are lauding this machine online as the next coming of the best console available. And I stand by my opinion right now. I don't understand why and I don't see it. I yeah. have had an Xbox Series X for a little bit longer than I've had the PlayStation 5 for. And it just does things that you want from a system. I can copy games. It supports 1440p. I can change the resolution in the the actual okay. system setting. So it doesn't, yep. uh, not the resolution, the, the refresh rate and the resolution in the system setting. So I'm not locked to something. Why are these things absent from Sony system? Like I've even bought external storage for my Series X because there are a lot of optimized titles coming now and I need this, the, the new storage, right? So I ordered a, the memory unit from Amazon. Okay, sure. It cost me a pretty penny, but you know what? SSDs are expensive. So regardless of whether it was a third party device or their proprietary format, it still would have cost me the same amount of money. At yeah. least I have the option on Series X. I don't have it on PlayStation 5, at least right now. Why? Exactly. Because Sony haven't put it into the software. So when you download your five games for Christmas this year, because that's all the, the drive can support, or maybe eight games or whatever the case is, there's nothing else that you can do because you cannot move PlayStation 5 games to external storage at all. Yeah. Whereas you can on Series X, you can move it to an, a hard drive and then later on, if you want to play it, or assuming it doesn't need this the faster SSD, you can actually you can you can play optimized games off of external storage. Yeah. But but Sony have just removed. I'm sorry, I'm I'm actually very irritated right now. Now that you've pointed that out, and now I've launched sorry. a whole tirade <laughs> about it, and and you know I've been trying to be very civil about the PlayStation Five, but you know, personally speaking, it a lot of it feels half baked. It just I mean even and I was telling Edward this. The bloody Wi-Fi name for the PlayStation 5 comes off as PS4 in yeah, the setting. Yeah, it says PS4. I even took a screen grab and I sent it to Edward and I was like, what the hell is this? So that leads me on to something else. And I know I'm supposed to be saving this for the review, but I've had enough time with the OS now 
to really, really believe that Sony did not write this from scratch. All they did was they took the PlayStation 4 OS and they embellished it with a few more um, bells and whistles and made it faster. Like, yeah. honest, honestly speaking, because this, the, the system settings menus are too similar for it to be mm. different. Not to mention the fact that it comes off as PS4 Wi-Fi. Yeah. What is that weird. about? Why? It's a PS5. Makes no sense. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I did not mean to, to get into that. Anyway, Look, all so... Of, all of these things <laughs> might get better with time, with updates. But okay. as it stands... The, yes, that's fair. But why are you releasing something that that with with features to come in the future? Yes. Okay? That's so, the issue. So why is it that Xbox, people keep looking at it and saying, oh, it doesn't have games. But yet it has all the features from the previous generation and more. But nobody wants to look at that. Everybody's like, oh, but there are no exclusives. Well, you know what? I'm going to be the one to tell you there are hardly any exclusives on the PlayStation 5 either. So there is Miles Morales, which, fair enough, is an, it, it's technically expansion content that they've made bigger. All right? So it's, yeah. it's got, what, an extra 10, 15, 20 hours of gameplay. So I, I can't exactly say that that's not worthwhile. That will be the one thing that is worthwhile for the system. But Godfall is cross play, is cross title, so you can play that on PC. Bug Snacks, you can play that on PC. Um, the Demon Souls remaster is a remaster. Yes, it looks beautiful. Yes, there are a lot of changes, but it's a remaster. It's not a brand new title. If you've played the original, you are going to have played the new one. Okay, yep. it's the same as like the Crash Bandicoot remaster or the Spyro remaster, and so on and so forth. They're the same games, just remastered. So, you know. Great, I'm glad those games are on the system. And yes, those are nice to have. And there are more there than there are on the Series X right now. But don't tell me that those are system sellers because I don't believe it. Okay, mm. I'll be the first to say that, well, personally speaking, um, I bought PlayStation 5s for, for our business. We actually ordered both, the disc and the, the digital edition. Now that we have the disc one, I can hopefully cancel one of those. Up, but I'm not really sure if Sony's allowing us to keep this one. It's left to, uh, that still has to be determined. Um, but the fact is, if I didn't need it for our business to review these launch titles, I wouldn't even wouldn't bother buying a PlayStation right now. Yeah. That's the honest truth. Um, yeah. Just because I use Xbox as my my primary platform, you know, exclusives be damned. The fact of the matter is, it's the, it's the features that it has, like Quick Resume, for example, that Sony just doesn't have. That, to me, is more important than telling me that there's one game on the system that I can play that I can't play on the other one. Yeah, uh, pretty much. That's just... Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I, obviously, you can tell I feel very strongly about this. It's just I'm angry yeah. about the, you know, I'm a gamer. I want my stuff to work. It's I don't want to have to, yes, I don't want to be limited by my brand new machine. Like, it just yeah. doesn't make sense to me. And nobody wants to call out Sony for it. Everybody's just like, oh, you know, best thing since sliced bread. And I'm like, okay, sure. That's because you don't know any better. That's as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on from Sony's DMCA takedowns yep, and my down. whole tirade. Um, I don't even know if this is worth talking about anymore, but we'll just quickly speak about it. <laughs> um, it's got to do with um, copyright infringement and cartography. Uh, for those who don't know, cartography is the, the, the means of map making, you know, where you draw maps and you, you show like streets and, um, you know, rivers and stuff like that. Uh, basically, in, in the past, in order to prevent people from stealing other people's maps, because, you know, being a cartographer... A, co a cartographist, a cartography. I'm thinking it's a cartographist. <laughs> I don't know. Being somebody who dabbles in cartography, um, <laughs> it's 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 challenging work. It's tough, especially if you do it the old-fashioned way. And mm. so, what a lot of what a lot of these uh, cartographers used to do is they would put in fake streets or fake elements, so that if somebody stole their map, they would know and they could then prove it in court that that person used their hard work without um you know without approval or compensation um and i just thought it was it was really it's like an interesting fun thing because you know like i mean i would do that i mean you go yeah. there and you do like a little 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 um you know dick shaped pond and be like yeah that's, that doesn't <laughs> that, exist <that's> me. <laughs> that doesn't exist you know <laughs> this is my map <laughs> or, or, or whatever they or, I would, actually to be honest i'd probably sneak in like a pokemon name or some kind um, I was somewhere about to say, on the map. <laughs> like like many developers and software engineers, they always put like Easter eggs in their code. Yes, um, yes. In, and if it gets stolen, or or mod modders would usually just open up the code and notice all these things, and then you'd see, oh, um, that actually is original code from that other game. W what's going on here? Yeah, and yeah. 
So it's it's quite cool, actually. It look it's cool, and I will link to the the article that we found about it, and you know about what people do and how like even like the smallest of changes, like the elevation of a hill, they might put a fake figure in. And what's even more interesting about this, and I thought this was really funny, is that Google has been caught out using the wrong and fake maps. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there, there, was, there was actually um the, the the name evades me right now but there was actually the city that google had on their maps which doesn't exist uh, the cartographer put it in as a fake <laughs> a fake <laughs> thing fake name fake roads fake everything and google had it i think it was in 2009 um and then they eventually discovered it wasn't real and, and removed it i'm, I'm assuming Jeez. people were like listen listen bitch there's nothing here yeah i went there and there's nothing i went there and there's nothing it's empty yeah. field. <laughs> 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 now now of course you know, that kind of a journey would probably make you sweat. Um, and, you know, everybody knows if you sweat, you smell. Mm-hmm. But do you, though? <laughs> well, I do. Okay, so do I. So do I. <laughs> um, now, Edward and I have spoken about um, the, the little bacteria that create body odor. Yeah. Um, we've mentioned it twice in a sense. First was in episode three, way back at the start of Gettle, where baby we Gettle. discussed, um, yeah, Baby Gettle, where we discussed Thanos's armpit hair. Really great episode, by the way. Yep. Um, and then in episode 28, we spoke about the um, the body odor organisms that actually live on your skin uh, and how, you know, they interact with like the sweat molecules and whatever, and it, like ferments, and that's where you get the smell from. And then we also mentioned in that same episode how it's actually a genetic thing, whereby you either have the gene or you don't to have bo and um now building on that i've actually come across something that was really quite cool it turns out that asian people most notably south koreans where the study was conducted don't have the gene (laughs) they don't have the gene for bo (laughs) that's cool but the, 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 the reason why this is interesting is that because even though they don't have the gene at least three quarters of people who don't have the BOG still use deodorant. It's because they don't know any better. Yeah. And 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 the the, the entire study is so interesting because it, it launches into um you know what is considered normal. What do we consider normal in the Western hemisphere? And of course, normal is smelling good. Smelling yeah. bad is bad. All right. <laughs> That's obviously smelling good, smelling bad. Anyway, um, so it's just very interesting how these people are using deodorant when they don't need to use deodorant. All right. Um, and more specifically, the gene is called ABCC11, as if they couldn't, some, they should have called it like BO12 or something. Anyway. Yeah, body odor um, 12. <laughs> Jeez. What, what I also find interesting about it, and, and this totally, I, I can totally relate to this, um, is if you have the gene, okay, so that you don't get body odor, you will often have dry earwax. If you do have the gene, which causes body odor, and I think it's like 97% of Westerners do, um, you will have waxy earwax, as in it's wet. As it's gooey, yeah. Yeah, it's gooey. And of course, I have my AirPods in right now, my AirPod Pro, and I'm like, I- I'm going to have to clean them after this, like every time I wear Always, them anyway. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it was just it's just a, a really fascinating look at how they've discovered this gene, how a lot of... Asian specific people don't have it, so therefore they actually don't smell. But they're using deodorants because I guess society tells them they need to use deodorant, even if they might not need to do it. And how the kind of earwax you have determines if you have this gene or not. <laughs> so so basically, cool. because because I'm still single, I need to find a lady with dry earwax. Then that way she'll never have to use any kind of cologne. And only her her delicious natural sense will be enough to get me going. And you'll save a bit of money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, money. That, that's what I was going for. <laughs> anyway, it, it's it's just, it's it's a fascinating thing to think about, you know, that mm. they've discovered this gene. So like, like I know we've, we've spoken about chimeras and that in the past and, you know, gene editing and sequencing and stuff like that. Um, I'm curious to you, our, our listeners, would you genetically engineer your child if given the option? Now, I suppose... As a as a person of faith, um, I sh- should say no. But if I could make this like, you know, s- this like six foot six ginormous kid with like, tes- like testosterone out of the wazoo without any hair and bo, <laughs> 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 
I, I think I might. <laughs> then you might get the rock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny! And of course, that's just showing my, um, my, uh, you know, my, my my look at Western ideals of what is considered normal, you know. Whereas, you know, ideally, you should just want to have your child naturally and see what it comes with. But I mean, honestly speaking, though, if we could use CRISPR to prevent your child from getting cancer, I would do it. I totally yeah. would. You Easy. know, the, the ba- basic things like that. Um, Anyway, with all of this like weird and funny stuff in the mind, then of course we're headed into somewhat conspiracy theory territory, oh. which leads us into the church of the subgenius, ladies and gentlemen. Which sounds like a conspiracy theory <laughs> in itself. <laughs> because it is. It's an entire religion and church based on conspiracy theories. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I How don't know. paranoid Maybe. do you need to be? No, it, it's it's not not about being paranoid. It's just so Allegedly, the church of the subgenius is, well, not a parody, but people look at it and they consider it to be a parody of other religions, okay? But the, the people who are in the church believe it to be legitimate. Now, apparently, it was, um, it was formed in the 1970s uh, by somebody called Ivan Stang, um, who was born Douglas St. Clair Smith. And um, Fila Drummond, which was also known as Steve Wilcox. Why they changed their names, I don't know. Uh, Those conspiracies. <laughs> and, and allegedly, at this meeting where the, this religion was born, there was somebody called Dr. X. <laughs> oh, of course. You can't, uh, you can't. Like, like, this honestly, is an episode of X-Files. <laughs> when, when, I read, when I read through this thing, I was like, this would make a fascinating television series. Yeah. Really. Jeez. Even if it was a, a procedural show about how every week they stumble upon something new to add to their religion. <laughs> you know? <laughs> the founding minutes of <laughs> the subgenius. And Gosh. so, um, you know, if you look into it a little bit more, um, it started off in Dallas, Texas, as I said, in the 70s. And, you know, it, it's apparently people who know people who are in this church of the subgenius think that they're totally over the top and for obvious reasons yeah um this is mainly because of like i mean you just heard how the founders changed their names and they had a dr x at their meeting you know (laughs) (laughs) um there's there's more to it than that though like how they have like sacred scribes and professional maven of weirdness you know these are like titles they give to people um and, and they have this very intricate mythology um which revolves around gods aliens and mutants which apparently give insight into how you should live your life. <laughs> okay. And um, their primary deity is called Jehovah One. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and it's an extraterrestrial who allegedly contacted um, an individual by the name of, of Dobbs, who I think was one of the... Oh, yes, that was... So Stang eventually changed his, his name to Dobbs. I don't know why again, so he changed his name twice. Um, anyway... So this, this extraterrestrial, it sounds a lot like Scientology, actually. This uh, extraterrestrial contacted Dobbs and gave him all the information that he needs um, for this religion. Um, and apparently it came to him while he was watching TV. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but you want to know what's interesting about this, though? And this is something I think you'll like. Is they, um, a lot of their mythos comes from H.P. Lovecraft. So they've actually taken a lot of what he wrote and they've adapted it to their religion. Um, specifically the elder gods. Um, okay. And yeah, it's just it's just it's just a really funny look at what people will consider religion, I guess. I don't know. That, ex- <laughs> that explains why they're as paranoid as they are. Because they watch too much TV. <laughs> but okay, but hold on. One of their core tenets, and this is gonna lead us into everybody's favorite section, is um is it's called Slack. And not the popular messaging app that businesses use and that we've used before at Vamers as well. <laughs> um, but it is Slack with a capital S. And this core tenet of the subgenius religion, or the church yeah. of the subgenius, um, has to deal with sex and avoidance of work. Doing both is considered Slack. And then if okay. you have Slack, you are living your best subgenius life. <laughs> oh. I thought it was the other way around. <laughs> no, but, but think about it. Avoiding work and pumping. Like, what do slackers do? That. That's exactly what a slacker would do. 
So I it's guess. a religion for slackers. <laughs> <laughs> I need to slack some more then. Now, yeah, who, who doesn't? <laughs> Time for NSFW. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a section that um, Edward actually had from last week. It's pretty in depth. I don't know how much we're actually going to speak about today. Um, it all depends on how Edward is feeling. Um, so, yeah. Ed, by all means, uh, what take it away. I think I think the section was all about stimulation. Oh, yes. Th- all of a sudden, I'm thinking about what you could do with the deal sense. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Okay, so um, last week I was searching for for uh, I guess more female oriented stuff. Um, oh, are we back? Are we back on the the vag train? Not entirely, no. Um, this is more <laughs> Look, for everyone. It's not that I'm complaining. It's not that I'm complaining. Um, it's really interesting to know about this stuff and to speak about it because it makes us more knowledgeable. And also, what is it to the penis? It's pretty uncomplicated, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Badge trains are just better. Uh, <laughs> take that as you will. So, the thing is, we, we spoke about f- sex toys a lot. Um, but yes, and how they can be hacked and how you should never click on adverts because the exactly. adverts be hacking your life, then be hacking your toys and then no more enjoyment. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, None so of that is even related, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so essentially, this is all about other ways to stimulate yourself and your partner. So, it it Shame comes it. down to... It looks like you're what? being very simulated there in your face right now. <laughs> I'm trying to be as as courtly as possible without contorting myself. I'm good now, actually. So, okay. um, I found a list called... Uh, or rather, I found a list of nine things called sensation play. Um, oh. Which is essentially, instead of using... Or, or always, instead of always using sex toys, you can use other things or even senses or, or other things or even just yourself to stimulate your senses, rather. And essentially, I found this list, which is, quote unquote, a must try for everyone. <laughs> um, now, how must it is, I think, just <laughs> comes down to your personal preference because there's some of, some things on here that I just wouldn't do. Um, <laughs> now, now, it is it is no secret that that for women um, to to be stimulated is much more complicated than for men. Hence, um, why foreplay is so important. Exactly, um, it's it. There, there's a lot, lot more factors than just the G spot and you know, the clitoris and all those stuff. It's, it's as you said, the senses and it's about the foreplay. It's about basically priming the body. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, according to self.com, the, they explain it as priming the mind, the body, and all the senses and, and giving you this extra sensory stimulation instead of the usual stimulation. Um, and a, it leads to some out-of-this-world experiences, <laughs> apparently. Okay, tell us, tell us. Now, give, give, give us the, 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 the just okay, of, so of, of, of... Okay, are you going to give us all nine? Because I'm very, uh, very curious to know I what might, you're talking I about I might here. give us all nine because <laughs> this is quite intriguing. Okay now, okay. now, starting the list is candles. Now, as we all know, oh. as we all know, candles can smell nice, which is one of the senses that you can. Oh, stimulate. that's not that's but not what you're also, going with. <laughs> also, candles have wax. Now, if you've seen any porno, I guess on on late night ETV, um, for for, for those of you who are young, too young on E. <laughs> The, the, the 12 o'clock movie, essentially, every Saturday night. I, I, is that even still a thing? Anyway, um, let's not... <laughs> they call it wax play, okay? And all it is is basically just dripping hot wax onto your significant other's body. And many people like it 
And the, the reason I like it is because it, it, it gives you that balance of pleasure and pain. Now, now the pain goes Especially away quickly. Especially by the nipple. Uh, I guess. I guess. say about that. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's also called temperature play, um, which I'll speak about oh, in a little Oh, there's actually bit. a name for it. That's awesome. Yes. Wow. Um, well, this specific one is called wax play. Um, and yeah, it's... It's all about balancing the pain and the pleasure. Do, do you know what I'm thinking now? You, you get the Gwyneth Paltrow Vag Candle and you use that during your session. Mm, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Or, <laughs> or that, that other lady, didn't she also make one? The, the I've forgotten her name now, the jazz Baidu, musician. Erica Baidu. Yes. Yeah, she made an incense candle. Oh, that's it. You burn her incense and you have Gwyneth Paltrow's Vag leaking on it's you. It's got to be overloaded. This is a... <laughs> Wow. You want you want the sensual experience. This is <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe you like the overload, but but <laughs> self.com actually says that wax play is best combined with sensory deprivation, such as blindfolds. Because it creates, oh, I can believe it that. creates that anticipation. So, oh, I can believe that. I can now, believe that. <laughs> Okay, moving on. <laughs> yeah, now moving on to the second one is uh, it's just titled <laughs> Paddles and Floggers. Now we all know where this Listen, is going. Listen, I, I had I had a quick look. This is very uh, Fifty Shades. <laughs> yes, it's very Fifty Shades, which is I wonder if this is really a must to do or not. Uh, but I like. <laughs> okay, rest. okay, candle candling. Yes, if you do it the right way. Yes. Now, just just as a tip for anybody who's keen, you always you you you. When you do it, you don't put the candle close to where it's going to drop onto. You no. do it from a height Let it fall. because otherwise you're going to burn. Yeah, yeah. Yes. just in case anybody's interested. Okay, carry on. No, but also <laughs> on that note though, um, I think what makes that a good entry point for that kind of thing is the reason that wax, the the the, the burn goes away quickly because the wax yes, actually yes, acts yes. as a, also an ointment for the burn if you keep well, it well on. see this this is the thing you so, can actually get candles that have real essential oils in them so if you get the right ones for these sessions it's actually really nice i am intrigued <laughs> by all your knowledge of wax play anyway, anyway. <laughs> moving on to impact play um which is essentially the practice of striking your or prodding your Don't like and other now Prodding, yes. In striking, this, no. <laughs> in this <laughs> essence, they, they mention that paddles and floggers. The, the the beauty of it is that, excuse me, the beauty of it is that you can use it any level of hardness or striking. You don't need to yes, yes. strike your, your significant others, but that it goes blue. You know, um, <laughs> well, if you be doing that, then we're going to be worrying because you uh, shouldn't be doing. That. Well, maybe they like that. Is all I'm going to say. You know, um, I'll, I'll, look, I'll be honest. I, I don't, I don't like smacking. Yeah, or to be smacked. I, to, to be, be honest with you, it's not, it's not nice. Well, I've never been know. smacked, so I don't know. Never say I'm just no saying. To me, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could. No, no, no. no. I, I can't imagine being paddled like that. That that's how is that nice? I like, know, it's like, weird. like, like, like. The wax, I can totally get behind. Like, that's... Yeah. Mm, but the smacking, no. Uh-uh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, again, this comes down to, to balancing the erotic pleasure with the pain. Um, Fair enough. They Fair call enough. it erotic pain, um, pain, which is weird in my opinion, but that's how it is. <laughs> Many people just like it like that, okay? I'm not judging. Okay, okay. Now, now, self claims that floggers can especially be fun, you, because you can use it in in ways that you can tickle your your. I, oh, I always want to say opponent, see, but you see, you see. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, I guess I'm an opponent with a happy string. ending. <laughs> you see, like like th that, I can get behind, and that's why I would say that like wax goes hand in hand. Yeah. Because, you know, it's it's like, especially if you do the sensory deprivation thing, you know, where you blindfold each other, and, well, one of you at any rate, and then you, you do the whole, like, the caress. So, like, you can take the flogger and you can you can caress in you between the breasts and then you drop yes. the... You, yes, okay, okay, you get and it. And around the areola and stuff. Yeah, it's, that's yes, essentially what yes, it comes down to. Yes, 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 yes. Now, that's the two ways you can use impact <clears throat> play. So, I guess even tickling is impact play. Now, moving on to... No, I disagree with that. Yeah, but okay. so would I, but <laughs> that's what they say. Now, okay, okay. moving on to Wartenberg wheels... Okay. Now I've seen these things before. I never knew their name. I didn't <gasps> know what they're used hey, for. Hey, I'm reading ahead here. That's like those exercise wheels. 
basically the only oh, difference is these have little spikes so good now now the pictures <laughs> i've googled for this is it looks like a torture device okay now what it comes down to is that you take this device and you you roll it yes. on your significant other and that spikes depending on how hard you roll or how soft you roll that's another kind of sensation play that's mm. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it can basically tickle your your significant other or create some form of erotic pain. Once so again. this might be not TMI, uh, yeah. but I don't experience pain from being squished hard in the muscles, as in. Um, <laughs> If you have a dev- if somebody has a device like this and they use it on me, I actually get very ticklish. I don't. It doesn't hurt me. <laughs> well, so maybe this is something for you to try. Then. It's hundred percent is Edward. So, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. See, you're you're discovering all these things about yourself. Discovering. Now, mm, let's go with new already. But yeah. carry on. <laughs> I need to hear the stories on. <laughs> so, so going back to temperature play again. Um, you, you. Oh, this is this is weird. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Are you talking, is this is this ice? Are you gonna yes, go to ice? This is oh. back to the uh, the yes, ice yes, instead yes, of yes, the yes, wax. Yes, yes. So, we've all seen that R- Richard Gere movie where they put the ice on the lady's back. Uh, probably Diane Lane's because they're always in movies together. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, she's hot, by the way. I don't judge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't like it at all because I don't like cold things. Um, okay, but because okay, you, but it's not meant to be put on. Okay, I, I get the putting it on you, like like ice on the nipples. Yay. Um, but I was actually thinking of uh, Fellatio, right? Where the way you, you <laughs> I give too much away on this podcast. Carry on. <laughs> um, what you do is you get you get those ice chips and you let the other person suck on it for a while and then they suck oh, on something else. See, that's actually yeah. what they 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 don't mention that, but that's actually a quite intriguing. No, no, point. but 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 um, that's how you should do it. If you do it any other way, it's not comfortable. So, well, yeah, if you put the ice right there, it's gonna be yeah, but uh, uncomfortable. Yes, that too. Also, don't put ice cubes in the mouth and then go it's gonna be it. that it cold. Work either. Uh, you don't want to be that cold. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so um also with the ice and the the hot thing they actually recommend that temperature play can be done with stuff like stainless steel um sex toys and other oh stuff. you mean like putting it in the fridge yes so oh put- no I, I no i would be careful with that i'd be careful with that no no they recommend only putting it in the in the normal fridge for like 10 yes minutes i was max. just gonna say i was just gonna say and also because um, <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 already envisioning people putting these things in the deep sticking. freeze and yeah like freezing onto the clit <laughs> <laughs> or the nipple <laughs> oh goodness okay imagine that hospital visit so yeah how do you explain that oh i froze my nipple off with <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think doctors have seen weird shit, by the way. So I don't think you should feel bad going to the doctor with something (laughs) like that. Uh, Yes, actually, that's a a good PSA. If if anything does happen, do not be embarrassed. Doctors don't care. They just want to help you. I mean, my house doctor I've seen my mini me more times than (laughs) I care to admit because I'm paranoid about these kind of things. And I'm not scared of just showing my junk to someone who might explain to me what's going on, you know? So yeah, PSA, don't be afraid of going to the doctor. Yeah, don't be afraid. Exactly. So you can also put this in like hot water for like 10 minutes to create a new sensation. That one for me is um, not as nice as the cold because especially, okay, speaking from a, a purely man perspective, okay? When we enter a orifice, any one of them really, it's deliciously warm already. Um, perhaps it might be different for, uh, you know, the female gender where they're inserting something. I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah. The thing is, I don't know so much about the man thing, but they say that maybe women, maybe your SO might like it a little bit hotter or yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. colder. So it's worth <laughs> experimenting 
with it. I so see. But just be careful, though. Yes, <laughs> in, in, other words, be careful. in other words, if you, 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 it's got to be cooler than even feeling warm on your, your palm. Yes. In other words, it's, gotta, it's almost like baby bottle warmth. Yes. Would it be careful? Yeah. So, so you, you want it hot, but <laughs> you, you want it hot, warm, but you don't want it burning or scalding. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Now, moving on from that, we've actually mentioned this in the past times, and it's audio. Now, yes, I know. Y'all still be waiting for my ASMR videos. Speaking of, <laughs> yes, I got like, a couple of comments on YouTube when people are like, when are you making more of these? And I'm just like, when I get more keyboards to review. No, when I have the time. <laughs> That's when. Actually, do your fingernails over the PS5 texture. <laughs> Maybe. Just scratch it a bit in the mic or something. Um, so, yeah, we, we've spoken about this in the past. And it comes down to basically the podcast type we, we've mentioned and the story type we've mentioned. And, but yeah, yeah. also leading <clears throat> off from that, um, and and what you can find on Quinn.com is literally ASMR. Now, For those who don't remember, uh, mm. that's a website that specifically deals with erotic audio. Yes. And we actually had a clip of that in one of our previous episodes. Yes, yeah, so it's actually a French <laughs> man speaking in you. Is yes, it was hilarious. And there was uh, also an Australian one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the ASMR aspect, as we all know, ASMR is already a very intimate um, genre Look, of audio. This, I believe. This, I yeah. believe. Actually, it's funny you mentioned this. Um, mm. There was a topic that I was going to discuss this week, but I've actually moved it to next week. Um, and it has to do with enjoyment of audio and what it does to you. So this is really fascinating that it's actually linked. Oh, that's cool. But, yeah, we but, can... Uh, yeah, we'll speak a little bit more more in depth next week about it, but you yeah. can carry on telling us now about what it does because okay, I believe so, this. So, so ASMR actually stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, mm -hmm. and if you go and Google <laughs> any ASMR or you just go to YouTube and put in literally ASMR for anything, you you get food ASMR, you get people doing the keyboard thing as Hans did in his quite viral video by now. And I still want to do the the home pod one. <laughs> you, you really do need to. Because that'll be fascinating. Anyway, um so that's already a very intimate thing because it's soft, it's quiet. And um it, as I move into the mic like this, um you get the effect that it they makes such a wonderful difference. Yes. Uh, and they call it the, uh, there's a word for it, intimate something effect. And that's literally what this is called. Look, and, th there's um, actually another word as well. Um, but yeah. I've, again, I've just, it's just evading yeah, it's right now. There. It's, yeah. Yes, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's the one where you get goosies. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Um, okay. We actually okay. mentioned it. Didn't you speak about we, Kate, we've, like Katy Perry? We have in the past. Yes, yeah. yes, we, we mentioned it a few times before. So it's fine. It's fine. We'll we'll actually let, let, let's curb this one just a little bit, and then okay. we'll speak about it a little bit more properly next week. Okay. Okay. Hey? Because so, just so we can get our facts in order. Okay, so basically, <laughs> the, the gist is that erotic ASMR exists as well. Um, I dig. I dig. And then moving on to what they call flavored accessories. Now this is the taste mm. sensation. Now, yeah, I'm also on the fence about that one because they never I mean, taste the way flavored, they say Flavored lube is gross. Yeah, lube is gross. Yeah. The, the condom is so, gross. It, yeah. And even edible panties and stuff. It, <laughs> it, my experience with flavored stuff is that it never tastes the way they say it's it. It's never tastes. nice. Also, I, I, I just fall on the whole, sorry, I've been doing keto for five years, so I can't do that. Well, so there's that as well. So, <laughs> so, so instead of rejecting sorry, the Sorry, I ASO, can't eat your panties Yeah, it's you just because... like, sorry, honey, I can't. <laughs> but I'll throw it that way while I push this hot dildo into your vag. Never mind, never mind so. the fact that it's the most disgusting thing. <laughs> yeah. Because they don't, they, they taste awful. They, they just genuinely do. So there's that. Um, but also they mention that you can get essential oils and balms, uh, which is also flavored that you can play around with your okay, ESO with. That's interesting. No, maybe a I've little bit more of a of natural alternative. Hey? Exactly. Maybe. Yeah. Um, and obviously it'll make you all oily and hot in the process as well. You see, you see, look, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you. The oily stuff, other than wax, because wax is, it's minimal oil. Okay? Yes. It's I don't generally like it because 
it ruins the sheets. Yes. It's, it's gross. I hate anything oily. I, I constantly yeah. wash my hands. I constantly wipe my, my, my glasses. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Oil sucks. Anyway. <laughs> so, and then moving back to blindfolds, we, we did cover that already. It's just yeah, the we second did. one we on did. the list. And then the last one is nipple clamps. I was actually wondering when you were going to get to this. And I actually thought you were going to talk about this when you mentioned the um, the wax. Because they're kind of related. They are related. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so nipple clamps is the one thing everyone essentially combines with everything. That's why it's the, it's on the list uh, to begin with um, and not excluded <laughs> well, from the list. It's because um, it can be really nice. You just I have don't to. Know about that. No, it can be, but but it's see, it's how you do it though. So it's it's never just because th- that's horrible. You got to <laughs> you, you, you 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 ease it and you off and you ease it and you off and you ease it and off and you 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 go with it until eventually it's just on. <laughs> see, this is fascinating me to no end. Um anyway <laughs> yeah no no but, but that's literally it now now you can also bite and clamp and prod and and yes, yes, yes. all those things uh because nipple clamps are as versatile as you just explained it in, in <laughs> very well detail actually um because it uh, they say it elevates the senses and and it helps with that pain Look, to erotic it's not sense. it's not for everyone so yeah. the, the person has to enjoy that in nipple play first of all yeah if they don't then don't even bother yeah because you th- that, that's not the kind of thing you can it's get... it's not nice if, if somebody doesn't enjoy it it's yeah, exactly just, but you you can ruin it for everybody exactly and and, and yeah. it's it's not the kind of thing that you can get used to enjoying no um you like... either you either like it or you don't yes actually for a lot of these things that you've mentioned now you either like it or you don't like even asmr and and listening you either get stimulation from audio or you don't yeah it's it's very seldom that you can actually learn your way through these some of them yes like like maybe the the paddles and the floggers sure um but the wheels no uh temperature yes uh clamps no blindfolds yes so there's certain things yes you you can you know because i mean just closing your eyes and your ears is not a huge deal you know you can get used to that while the person caresses you um but there are certain things here where the person's either going to like it or they're not yeah, and 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 you should know because you'll know what you like and what you don't, and exactly. then that's why you have. It's very important for you to have open communication, communication with the yes, person. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, yeah. On that note, actually, I did mention to Hans earlier this week when he was editing his PlayStation Five unboxing. <laughs> unboxing. I I never liked unboxing videos. Never. I hated them, and now suddenly I can't stop watching them. And I wonder whose fault that is. It's uh, not. It's my influence. Yeah. But uh, I digress. Um, at the end of the day, it's all about communication. Um, get Absolutely. safe words. Know what your partner wants, doesn't want, what they like and don't like. Um, and yeah, that's all this and comes yeah. down to. But and that's the end of the NSFW. NSFW. <laughs> um, and that was actually... Uh, I went on much longer than I thought I would. I'm I'd actually glad that you're feeling okay. Um, I, I was very concerned for you for a short while. It's, uh, it's because actually... I, I, <laughs> I, I did notice several times where you did duck quite a, quite a bit. And I yeah. just kept on the conversation for as long as possible <laughs> without it thing. seeing it seeming a bit weird. <laughs> uh, I've noticed that every time I get an attack, I, that's what I'm calling it. Um, yeah. Afterwards, I can speak for a good long while and not feel any pain. And then suddenly it happens again. It, yeah, um, yeah. Like now maybe, I'm maybe it coming also, again. Also, oh, oh, so, oh, you can actually feel it come on. Oh, okay. Yes. So it, I feel it and then it happens. And then it goes away uh, and no pain. Well, then let me lead us into so, the outro. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool. Um, ladies and gentlemen and everybody, thank you so much for once again tuning in to Gettle episode yeah. 40. I can't believe we've made it this far. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I can believe it. I'm really glad we have. Um, but more so than that, thank you so much for all of the wonderful, awesome support. I mean, a thousand downloads, guys, that's just, that's incredible. I mean, when we, when Edward and I started this and even now it's still very much a passion project. So yeah. to see the numbers rise, I mean, sure, it might not mean much in the grand scheme of things, but for us, it's nice. It keeps us going. It keeps us wanting to continue, you know, yeah. um, we will have a lot more in the next 
two episodes because that's all that we're going to have. As, as we mentioned, we're going to stop at episode 42, um, which means that if anybody else has any more questions you'd like to answer us. And I mean, bear in mind now, when I say questions, I mean anything and everything. We're open yeah. to as much as possible without like, you know, divulging where we live and yeah, credit card information. <laughs> yes. like, as you know, if you've listened to this episode alone, we talk about anything. Anything um, and everything. Yeah. And obviously, yeah. if you ask super personal stuff, we might or might might not go into too much detail. Oh, no. Oh, no. But we will decide yes. what questions we get. <laughs> but no. um, we will keep it anonymous if that's what you'd like. Yes, otherwise, that too. That too. Otherwise, yeah, we are literally open to anything. Um, um, now, we have received a fair yeah. amount of questions already. And yes. we're really, really glad about that because it means that um, episode 42 will, is going to fill up quite nicely. Um, you know, as, as I mentioned before, it will be the final one for the year, um, which means we won't be doing anything in December. And we most likely won't do anything in January either. Just as like a two-month break, but namely because of consistency, whereby we started in on uh, Valentine's Day 2020. So Valentine's Day 2021 plus minus that week is most likely when we will return just because it's cool and it, it gives us a nice... 42 episodes where we start in february and we end in november yeah um but yeah it's 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 been awesome um we have cool stuff coming um we will try and make the next two episodes super jam-packed yeah. and we're looking forward to it and i'm a bit sad that it's ending already because it's, it's so used to it. it's so like this weekly thing up. wow <laughs> um but yeah uh, thank you once again everybody uh we hope that you have a wonderful 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 week ahead um stay tuned to edward myself and get socials for any other cool things that might happen to us on a daily basis mm -hmm. but yeah we will all see you next week for episode 41 so until then everybody have a wonderful week ciao for now bye bye